guys, welcome to a new video. This one is gonna be maybe a little different over the next couple of days. I want to kind of embrace the whole light academia vibe, which is bookish and introverted and just like lots of fun things. And I thought I would do a video sharing a bunch of light academia inspired activities. I want to do a dark academia one as well. I really wanted to do that one first, but the weather is not looking gloomy enough in the forecast for that right now. So we're doing light academia now, dark academia as soon as I get a few gloomy days because I'm in the mood for it, but the weather is just not agreeing with me. So over the next few days, I am going to be doing all sorts of fun light academia type things. The first thing that I feel like is very light academia-esque. Oh wait, maybe I should say what like light academia is. Really, it's it's the whole back to school vibe, back to university vibe, but in a lighter tone. So you like wear lighter colors and I don't know, just kind of do lighter things in some regard. And the reason I want to do this is just kind of to embrace autumn, embrace the whole like back to school season, even though I'm not really going to school myself, um, just to really notice the seasons as they come. So I'm going to be starting out by reading a book because my channel is called Chantel Reads All Day and I really don't have time to read all day, unfortunately, but I do like to read a lot. And I feel like nothing screams light academia like reading a classic book. And so I thought this would be the perfect time to get started on my Victober book, which is Wise and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. And I'm going to be starting this in reading this in the next few days as I am working through filming this and just living slightly light academia life. I really don't know much going into this book except people have told me that apparently she died before finishing the book. So like the last, I think I heard 15 pages or so isn't in here or something. I'm not really sure, but that's good to know going into it. I talked about this book briefly in my um, classic lit for beginners video because I feel like this is maybe, to me, this is her most well-known work. This is the one I hear of the most, but I read North and South and loved it. And so my tip was like, you don't always have to try the author's most like famous work. Try some of their other ones. Maybe the thing that, the book that isn't the most popular will really draw you in. And that's what happened for me, but maybe I will be drawn into this as well. I hope so. Also big chunky books, very academia feeling. I think so. Let's read this and do some other fun light academia stuff. Film here because Tolkien is so cute over there. It's actually really cute. I should just get a shot of him. He's got a bit of a Dracula tooth thing going on. Maybe he's more into the dark academia vibe today, but oh well. I feel like his coloring, he could go for either one. So a fun, both dark and light academia thing in my opinion, is going to the thrift store. And I think depending what you buy, maybe it determines what kind of, if you're in the light or dark vein. And boy, did I hit the classic jackpot. So this was definitely a light academia thrift shopping trip. I wasn't even, honestly, I wasn't even looking for classics. They found me. So the first thrift store, I found two books. This cool vintage version, Henry James, um, it's the turn of the screw and other stories. So there's the pupil and the third person and then the turn of the screw. I already own the turn of the screw, but I didn't have the other stories. So this was a cool find. I love, love this cover so much. Very light academia feeling, I think. It could be darker, but it's not. Then I found this book and I couldn't leave it there. I kind of already own it, <laughs> but this is the, um, 
Selected Journals of Ella Montgomery, Volume 1. This is 1889 to 1990. Now, I do have her journal, her Volume 1 journal, but I honestly don't know if it's the same. There's definitely some differences. I think maybe these were made by different people. This one, yeah. I'm going to have to compare my two because this one has pictures, but they're not interspersed with the text so much. It's like some text and then a couple pages of pictures. But I couldn't leave this there. Even if this is the same one that I already own, I couldn't leave it there. If anything, if like, if I don't want to keep it, I can give it to someone. Then I went to another thrift store and instantly the first thing that jumped out at me was uh, this GK Chesterton, wow, Chesterton book, The Man Who Was Thursday, A Nightmare? This is G, I can't say his name, G.K. Chesterton's surreal masterpiece is a psychological thriller that centers on seven anarchists in the turn of the century London who call themselves by the names of the week. I've never heard of this G.K. Chesterton book and apparently there's commentary by Hilary Belloc who has some hilarious poems so that's a little weird um, and then yeah. I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. That's so funny. And then there was a bookmark in here and it's uh, a Saskatchewan Foster Families Association bookmark. So I guess if this is a psychological thriller, it's maybe not so light academia, but I thought, I just saw GK Chesterton. I didn't actually look what it was about. Um, he has some like Christian writings as well. Oh, well, that one might be more on the dark academia side, but we will go back to light academia. I found some editions of Ella and Montgomery uh, of her books that I've never seen before. I collect her books even if I have a bunch of them. I only currently own one other Kilmany of the Orchard edition and I've never seen this edition before. And then it looks like this without the dust jacket. That was really cool. And then I found a copy of my favorite Ella Montgomery, The Story Girl. Like look at that, there's like a cat in her hair. Oh, I love it. And this one's kind of like a pukey green color. We'll keep the dust jacket on. Uh, yeah, so thrilled. I always find different editions of Ella Montgomery books at this thrift store. It's really cool. And then, the nerd that I am, I found the Norton Anthology English Literature, the major author's seventh edition. This has to do or I'm going to be using this in my literature university degree thing that I'm going to I don't know what it's called I'm going to be figuring out a really good like literature curriculum type thing for myself educate myself like I was going to university for free at home and this will help so I paid two bucks for this I don't know how much this normally costs but Definitely more than two dollars. This is almost 3,000 pages long. So that's a good start to a light academia vlog. So yesterday I knew that ugh, Tolkien always wants to bite when I start filming. We're not, we're not doing that. We're just looking pretty. Just look pretty. Okay, so yesterday I decided a very light academia autumnal activity is obviously going for a walk. And I wanted to go for a walk, but I didn't want to just go for like an ordinary walk. I go for a walk every day. I wanted to make it slightly different. Oh, ragdoll cats are huge. Um, so what I decided to do is go for a back alley walk. And you guys, this is 
something I used to do all the time and I totally forgot about in the last few years. Back alleys are so cool. There are so many like hidden gems that you don't realize are there. The back alley that I was walking through, I mean, there were so many leaves because people have trees in their backyard and just like vines that you don't see from the front and things are just turning beautiful colors here. The wind has taken a lot of the leaves down already, unfortunately, but it was, it was still beautiful. Anyway, I'm glad I did it. Today, I'm going to be continuing with some other activities. I did start reading Wives and Daughters. I'm going to continue it's more today. Um, I remembered that I started that book just before I started booktube. So I watched booktube for like a brief couple months before I started my channel and I forgot that one of the channels that I watched in those beginning days was Lucy the Reader. I don't, I think she's tried to like restart her channel a few times but I, I don't think she's really posting videos. Um, but she talked a lot about classics and I remember starting reading Wise and Daughters via ebook. So I didn't get very far because I need a physical copy. Um, but the first little bit of the book reminded me of that. I didn't get very far at all. So definitely gonna continue that today. And then I have some other fun activities planned. So let's get going. I mean, is there any better kind of mail if it's not bills? I love sending and receiving different letters to people. I have pen pals. I have a wonderful letter card from Amy to reply to. Um, I shared that I got this in a vlog a little while ago. And today I am sending out my first postcards and the stickers to those in my House of Dreams tier over on Patreon. And I'm just sitting here and feeling blessed. All the people that have bumped up into this tier that want to receive postcards from me. I'm sending out two postcards, one sticker, and it's so much fun to send. And I love the support and I hope they love receiving it just as much as I love sending it. So this is definitely a academia type thing to do is to send letters and happy mail and I'm excited to get these in the mailbox. So I have all of my current postcards and stuff to send out ready. Um, if anyone wants to get in on the current postcard design, the last day you have is October 15th. And then it's kind of a weird date that I chose, but I have weird reasons that make sense in my brain. Um, and then October 16th, I will be doing a new design, which I will share on October 16th. So I'm going to be sending these out. And then, yeah, if you sign up before the 16th, by the 15th. Okay, interrupted by a very sad three-year-old uh, who needs a snack, but I don't know what I was saying. Postcards are going out. I need to get some stamps. I'll do that later today. And then I have at least two light academia things I want to do today besides read more of Wives and Daughters. Um, I want to go to Starbucks and get my favorite order, which is a white hot chocolate with almond milk. Um, so I'd really like to do that today and I'm going to start a puzzle this evening because it's almost October as of filming this. Like by the time this is up, this is October and October is like puzzle month for me. So I'm going to be starting that and actually there might be a couple other things going on today as well. So I'm enjoying this embracing autumn in a slightly academia way. It's a good way to just really embrace the season and like I said, it's something I want to get better at.
you're trying to beat the shot. Okay, so I'm not really sure how light academia the yellow is, but my three-year-old wanted to match with me today and it doesn't happen very often anymore. So I took advantage of that wearing yellow, very autumnal. Um, let's do some updates. So I started my puzzle yesterday. I didn't get very far. I've just been sorting the edge pieces from the middle. This is a thousand piece puzzle. It's from Sheffield Home Paper Goods. I found this actually, so I found it at the Dollarama. I paid five bucks for it. I looked it up to make sure that it was actually legit because some of their stuff can be on the cheap side. And this is like a 20 to $30 puzzle normally and it seemed to have good reviews. Very summer feeling, but I don't do puzzles until generally October. We're in the last couple days of September here, but I don't do them in the summer. So I just do whatever puzzles I find, get my hands on. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna be working on that some more. I'm gonna pull out my mat. Jared has a game mat that's a certain material that works really well. Last year I got a roll-up mat, but it's felt, and the puzzle pieces kept getting stuck in there. It was it was actually very frustrating. Um, I really like his game mat, so I use that. It's a little excessively large. I use that to do my puzzle on and then roll it up. Uh, so there was that update. I am making my way through Wives and Daughters. I'm that far now and I'm realizing the first time that I read this I pretty much only read like the equivalent of like the first two pages or something and I'm getting into the story I ended up reading the back which gives a lot of spoilers because it talks about how the um, main character is like 17 but at the time of the start of the story she's only 12 uh, so I'm assuming we will advance pretty quickly here um, yeah, but I'm enjoying it. It took a little while to get into the language. I feel like it's been a while since I read a book set in this time period, kind of with this writing style, but I think I'm getting there. It's, it's a pretty easy read. It just, it took me a little bit to get back into. I read the first few pages over a couple times, as I tend to do with classics generally. And then I was like, what is a better, like there is no better light academia or academia activity than studying, right? And one of the books that I just got recently that I've been using is Church History in Plain Language by Bruce L. Shelley. This is the fifth edition. So I've just started this and I've been wanting to read about church history for a while. I had been reading from a different book. I had been reading from The Story of Christianity. This one's volume one. So it's a two volume, much teenier text. Still lots of pictures though than this book and this one's just been an easier read so I'm gonna read this first and then go back and read volume one and two of this. Um, so I have just read the first chapter which ends with Jesus's crucifixion. So not very far yet but I haven't really got into the church history yet but I'm going to start a new page in my notion and start um, taking notes and documenting things. One thing that really stuck out to me, and it wasn't really something that was even pointed out in here, it was just something that when I read it, I had this like light bulb moment. It says, many thought John was the promised Messiah, but he vehemently denied such a role. And it made me realize like, that is, it just goes to show that he was a true prophet. Because if you are a false prophet, you're gonna want that attention. And if people are trying to put you in a higher status like you're gonna jump on that and the fact that he didn't and that John kept saying no I'm not him but he's coming um I feel like that just elevates his words more like it, it seems more trustworthy then something that I never thought about before so yeah I'm gonna keep reading this I mean, it's gonna it's gonna take me a while but I'm gonna start a notion page for some of my notes so I'm gonna be studying this reading this very academic feeling vibes here. And then just continuing with my light academia activities. I feel like I should also start a, another book. <laughs> like, you know, this many pages isn't enough. Um, like maybe a more, normally when I'm reading a classic, I'm also reading a more current book. 
what do I have that would be like a more current read that's not more towards the dark academia vibe? Most of the ones I picked out for this month are either classics or kind of like fantasy or thrillers, so those wouldn't really work. Maybe I should just peruse my shelf for a minute. Oddly, the two books that were calling to me were not ones that I was thinking of. I have Bill Bryson's A Walk in the Woods. I've heard good things about his writing. I started one of his books years ago and I didn't enjoy it. I don't remember which one. Something about traveling the world maybe? I'm not really sure. Um, but this feels autumnal. I don't know what time of year it actually takes place, but the picture has autumnal vibes there, the cover. And then I also have the poetry of Robert Frost. And I don't know a lot, like I only know his popular poems. So I might start both of these. They're both books that I will just like dip in and out of. Um, so I think they'll both, I can start both of them. I'm not gonna finish both of them, but read a few pages here and there over a period of time. So I will start these as well. Just just to add, you know, to my page count here for my stack. That's that sounds good. He's actually a very quiet purr for how big of a cat he is. Anyway, I did some reading. Okay, so I've only read like the famous Robert Frost poems before. Like, I would say, um, there's probably like two. Um, the Walking, I actually forget what the titles are. Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. And then, um, I feel like there's one other one. Um, I've, so anyway, I haven't read much of his before, but I read the first few in here. Oh, I've got a cat here stuck to me. Um, and loved them. Definitely think he's gonna be a favorite. He might even end up bumping Emily Dickinson out of her spot. I'm currently reading through the complete Emily Dickins Dickinson book with like her complete poems, and I don't think she, you know, meant for them all to be published. They're definitely not all up to the same standard. Um, and it's like a much thicker book than this. So I'm definitely gonna just continue reading this over like a long period of time. Really enjoying it though. And then, this is really hard to do with such a fat cat. Actually, he's not fat. He's just really long and big. Uh, so I started A Walk in the Woods. I read the first two chapters, which they're each like 20, 25 pages each. So that's quite a few pages. And he hasn't actually started on the trail. He's just about to. Um, the first one is just talking about his idea to start. And then the second one is all about bears and the things that can go wrong on the trail. And Mama. what? I've got a three-year-old that needs to go pee. So we'll be back, or at least I will be. Okay, potty break is over. Uh, so we haven't started on the trail yet, but his writing is really funny and engaging. So it's nonfiction, but it doesn't feel like it at this point. So the only thing is he is going on this trip with the same guy that he went on the, like whichever one's the Europe one. Um, that's when I started and I think neither here nor there. Um, it got a little vulgar. Uh, for my liking, so I didn't finish that one, but hopefully this one will be good. Yeah, and then one thing I want to try tonight is another dollar store thing. I got this last year, like a year ago. Okay, so I can't crochet, like, at all, but I got this kit that 
was gonna try. My plan was I was gonna try it by the end of winter last year and I didn't. So now I wanna try it this fall. I feel like starting a craft, doing a craft in this way is kind of fits the light academia vibe I was going for. Um, so I'm gonna give this a try. I'm gonna start it this evening. I may not finish it. I may not be able to understand it. I call myself crochet dumb because I've tried to start multiple times and never been able to figure it out. Like even like the first stitch that a person does, I've never <laughs> been able to figure it out. Uh, I've had multiple friends try to teach me. I've tried to look at multiple YouTube videos. So will I be able to figure this out? I'm not sure, but I'm gonna spend some time this evening trying. <laughs> oh, little friend, <laughs> oh no, this is terrible. Little kids will love making friends with this huggable elephant. So does that mean little kids are supposed to be able to make it? And then if I can't, then what? What does that mean? Okay, well, it's supposed to be as easy as one, two, three. We'll give it a try. incredibly successful in these last couple days. I've been enjoying everything that I've started. Started a lot of books, but they've all been really good. Um, not so successful with this, you guys. I got the chain too, if you know crochet at all, the very basic thing. Um, I've struggled with that before. I got that part. I can't figure out the next step. <laughs> it's, like, it's so easy for people but it's not for me. So this is probably gonna go to the thrift store unless my daughter wants to give it a try. Probably not. Fun for all skill levels. I feel like this is false advertising. I wish I could crochet because there's some really cute little creatures. Even I often see on Book Outlet, they have like different kits with all these different cute critters that I wish I could make, but I can't. Um, so, and I have enough like sitting down activities that I like, like reading and stuff. So do I need to add more? Probably not. I just, I guess, need to decide that this is just not for me. I think I, I thought I had decided it before. And then I went and bought this last year and was like, yes, I'm gonna learn it. No, I'm not. Um, so I'm gonna close up this video here because I think the next few days are gloomy and maybe I will start filming my dark academia video if that is what's actually going to happen. So far, it doesn't look like it at all, but hopefully, hopefully we get some rain and some dark gloomy days and I can start some more books that are more in the dark academia vein. I would love to hear um, if you guys enjoyed this, if there, like what, what would you consider a light academia activity? Is there more ideas? I mean, I'm sure there are more ideas. In addition to what I've already done, what would you include? Uh, thanks so much for hanging out with me. And if you kind of want to see a part two, the dark academia version, um, stay tuned for that because it should be coming if the weather decides to work with me. Thanks so much for being here, guys. <laughs>